You are watching Unrendered on IKTV. I am Tony Regisford, and my guest is Mr. Omroy Theophilus Mears, better known as OT. We're into our final segment on this edition of the program. OT, I want to try to get into your head a little bit now, and if I may ask you, what it is that drove you or is con continues to drive you into the success that you are? Is it that you have an appetite for money and that's, that's what you're doing it for? You, you, you want to be rich, you like being rich, or is there something else? No, I tell you, what really drives me is the furniture I had sold one of the department store. Mm -hmm. When I go down and see the price tag on it, I sell for $50 and they were selling it for 105 Right. So I get angry about that. I say I'm not helping my people. When I say my people, I mean my Vincent and people. Right, right. I am not helping them. So I did do a quick maths and decide mm. I will, I throw away the $5. Right. So say they're making $50, I would pass it in two. I would give the customer 25 and take 25 So hence I sell my chair to the customer direct for $75. So you're saying it is really, yes, you can't operate a business without profit, or you shouldn't, but you also had this, well, this drive to satisfy the customer. The customer. Yes. You wanted to help your people? Is my that what you're people, saying? yes. And automatically I get more because I was selling for 50. Now I am getting 75. And they were paying 105. Now they're paying 75. Mm -hmm. You're in the business now of doing higher purchase and all that at this point. Was there any time that you thought, what am I doing? Am I going to get a lot of licks? Well, am I able to manage this whole credit business? Why I go into the, mm. higher, the credit business is to get a better cash flow. Because if you're in the store, not every day somebody would buy a chair. Mm. But if you have credit to a lot of people, when they come and pay and you mount it up, it's like they're buying more than a chain right. per day. So I study that also. You get some licks, yes, but you get a better cash flow. You, you mentioned that you left school when you were 14 years of age, but yet you've become an accomplished businessman. And we're talking here, and you're talking some principles of business, which people go to school to learn, essentially. People go and they do their masters, you know, their MBAs, etc., their bachelor's degrees in, in management and all these things. Clearly, you did not have that exposure. But you must have, though, been able to assimilate that knowledge as you went along. And some people may have influenced you. Is that the case? Or is the, the truth is, when you're in business, mm. you're not in just business for you. You are in business for others. Mm -hmm. I can build and buy from myself and utilize. I have to build with you in mind. So I build to your taste. Mm -hmm. You have to pay, so I have to make it easy for you to pay. So it's a win-win situation. But it's not just for all me. all of this out in your head, because what I'm saying to you is that people go to school to learn this thing. You know, well, it's a science. Management is know, more science. If you notice mm. in our conversation, I ain't tell you one thing that I get out of a book. Everything I tell you is out of practical experience. Mm -hmm. And that is the best. That is the very best. Practical experience. Let's talk about passion. You hear people advising the young people who are now leaving you know, community college or leaving university or going to university to pursue something, to find their passion, what it is you're passionate about, as opposed to what you think you should do. Is that the case with you? Were you passionate about carpentry? Yes. And I what tell drove you that passion? Where I get my passion mm. from, 
from age seven when my story mother, about your mother again. and my father had a fight and I stand between them and pronounce that I will come to build a house for my mother. This was my passion drive. I knew I had to become a carpenter. I didn't say I would come and work for money to build a house. I will come to build the house. And this is where my passion comes for building the first living room mm -hmm. chair. My mother sitting, I build it. Mm -hmm. The first table she get in a little house, I build it. So the passion come from that. I had to come to do it. Is there a religious center to, um, to OT? Is, is, is that one of your foundation pillars, or is it not? Well, you didn't hear this before. Now you're going to hear this. Mm -hmm. When I built that little house for my mother, she couldn't know when rain come in in the houses she used to live. They were tat roofs. Tat roofs, right. But when she hear water coming down and they galvanize, she come out from the chamber into the hall. Mm. She put her two hands up in the air and say, God bless my son, Omroy. I can hear when rain falling. And I think, I take it as a blessing. Mm. And I just keep doing things to make her happy. Then when I get married, I didn't study myself. I study my wife. You know why I study her? She came from a so-called wealthy home mm -hmm. that did not like me okay. because I did not have anything. Mm -hmm. And I purpose in my heart, she must not go back to that home to ask them for anything. So I was walking to make she happy. Right. Then I get children and I say, I don't want them to go through the pressure that I go through. I am walking to make them happier than I was. So my whole thing was for others. And when you take care of others, yourself is automatically taken care of. Where is Oti today? Oti's business, are you still growing? Are you satisfied now with your lot? Are you just maintaining what you have? I, are you looking for new business opportunities I, or are you trying to just withdraw yourself? I am satisfied with the businesses. It, the honors is on my children to go further. I have run the first leg of the really mm -hmm. very hard. And I told them, if anybody surpass them, they have to fall asleep. I would like to do other things, but business is in a situation today, if I have to advise anybody, don't try to go up and don't come down. The wind is contrary. If you try to go up, it may blow you off. And if you come down, the wind may change and you will regret mm -hmm. you ever come down. So my advice keep, to keep people the jib steady, then. is hold on. Keep the jib steady. Hold on. As, as some sailors may say. <laughs> hold on. With that said, Oti, do you see yourself retiring anytime soon? I don't like the word retire. Mm. I am here to live. Mm. And whatever makes me feel happy living, I would like to do. I, I, I'm here to live. I'm not here to die. You know. I am here to live. When death comes, that's a different That's thing. a different matter. I don't have anything to do with that. But I am here to live. And any opportunity I get to do anything while I'm living, mm. I'll do that. Apart from work, what, what do you do? I mean, you know, you're so engrossed in your business. You speak it, you, you, you're a walking encyclopedia, if I should put it that way, when it comes to the knowledge of your business. Well, I tell you this, eh? apart from work, it's still work. Mm. Because I might not do in something that you will call work, but I'm working on myself to keep fit. I left my home 4.30 every morning mm -hmm. and I walk between five and six miles. Then I come back, go straight to the beach and swim for about half an hour. So apart from work, I still walk. I'm walking on myself. 
So you, you, you the, understand the, the whole key, yeah, virtue yeah, of physical yeah, fitness. Yeah, physical fitness. And I spare no effort to give the youth's advice. Speaking about that, I mean, we can't, we don't have enough time to get into that mode in terms of giving all sorts of tidbits of advice. But I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. What would you say to a young person, or anybody for that matter of fact, who wants to engage themselves now in a business? Just start up. They have an idea, and they feel they can do this. I might advise them in a way that they don't like. Mm. The condition of St. Vincent today, no one man can run a business. Mm. If it needs three hands, let the three of you do the business. Don't follow that theory that they say partnership is leaky. leaky ship. So you're going to, you, you speak would in the contrary to that. Them. Yes. I would encourage them to bond themselves together. Spread the Two risk. eyes mm -hmm. cannot run a business anymore. Had I not offered to my workers the sense of ownership, mm -hmm. I couldn't watch what they're doing. But I set all the workers to watch one another. If one see the other one logging behind, he got to pull him up because he's playing with his daily bread. So your workers are, in fact, shareholders of your business. Yes. And that's a, that's a model that I know some other people have tried. But that's the way I would, encourage, yes. I would encourage anybody to go now. St. Vincent is too small for competition. What we need is complementing one another. Mm -hmm. All we need is living. When you notice the multi-million company merging together and a man who could hardly buy bread don't want his brother to see what he's doing he can't reach no place so we have to change that we have to change and that. you're advising young people even more from so the them, beginning right to start it that to way. look at partnerships yeah because when you go on down the road and you turn your back you remember i come through that line you know I used to hear people say he gone in the motor car and left we for mixed concrete mm -hmm. and all them kind of thing it, it must not be said. He gone to do what you couldn't do. Right. He gone to organize and meet with other people for you to get the bread. Don't say that, but people does say that. You've had this image, and, and rightly so, as a humble person. So much so that I think at one time they used to call you the barefoot millionaire. Well... I don't know much about the millionaire, but <laughs> I used to be very comfortable mm. going barefoot until I am diagnosed as a diabetic. Right. I have to protect my feet. So I am not wearing shoes for fashion. I wear in shoes for protection. Do you do anything for fashion? Or do you? Nothing at all. <laughs> not for fashion. There's no vanity about you? No, 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 no <laughs> vanity about me at all. Is that something that you want to advise people on in yes terms because of sometimes fashion is just false spread you know mm. false spread just be you that's all just be you don't follow nobody and don't care what nobody say about you you must know you and you can't try to keep up with the joneses you are you that's all are you going to do any investments outside of your business in terms of something that is not up the street of furnishing or, or carpentry? I am these willing. That you, you but look at? at this moment, do you I see yourself as an angel financier? Because you hear this talk about people, you know, want to find um, uh, people who come in with venture capital. You my see friend, yourself as that? My friend, I would do anything. Mm -hmm. But some people want to use your money. Mm -hmm. I don't mind that. But I must know who mm -hmm. uses my money. In the scripture, a question was asked. If you have this world good and you see your brother in need, and you shut up your bowels of mercy. 
how dwelleth the love of God in you? That meaning, you see a man in need, you must help him. But you must also know who you help. Yes. When the good master had given no talent, he gave one five, he gave one two, and he gave one one. You must know the man who get your five is going to walk to get another five. Mm -hmm. The man who get the two must walk to take to increase on the two. Right. But the man who get the one say, look, I know he is a hard master. You want to get to in a walk for a buried. So you have to know mm -hmm. who you are helping if they are going to, you know, diminish where you are, if they're going to improve. Right. You would have no greater joy than to know you help somebody and they help themselves to help others. Then you know you help so many people and not just one. That's the joy. But you have to know who you help. It's not everybody who come and say, lend me $20, you will just give you them just the give $20. Them. Well, Oti, you know, sadly we're at the end of this program. I would love to have you back here at some stage where we could talk about maybe some more personal things. What I would advise you, I would like to come back. Mm -hmm. But I would not like to know I am casting my pearls before swine. I don't think I'll be able Get the feedback from the people. <laughs> <laughs> we both will get that feedback. Okay, if we get that feedback, we wouldn't starve them. If they want more, they can have they will it. get more. That's it. Oti, thank you thank very you. much for coming on Unrendered. Thanks it was a, a pleasure. It has been my pleasure. Good. Thanks a lot. This has been another edition of Unrendered. My guest was Mr. Omroy Theophilus Mez, affectionately known as Oti, the man with finishing and furnishing. Do join us on IKTV the next time Unrendered is.